On behalf of our community and on behalf of our church, we welcome you to this place this afternoon. I thank you for being willing to come, joining in a tribute in a celebration of a life well lived, recognizing an individual who has left a deep and indelible imprint on all of our culture in our lifetime. You will hear from some folks who knew Ray Price well. You will hear music that will be familiar to you. And I, I pray that in the course of this, you're gonna be challenged, you're gonna be blessed. You'll leave out of here with a greater resolve to live the life that God has given you to live. But thank you for coming to be here for this family. Miss Janie, we are blessed to be here with you, and we thank you for the opportunity to join you on this very sad yet special day. Thank you for that. Gentlemen, bless us with some music. There's a certain awkwardness for you, I know, at a memorial service when somebody does music that beautifully. If you're Baptist, there's probably an amen that got hung about half Adam's apple. If you're Pentecostal, a hallelujah that you stifled somewhere down in here. If you're just a fan of great music, you wanted to clap, but you thought that's not appropriate at this service. Ray Price loved good music. I believe he would have clapped when that song ended just a moment ago. And so I want you to feel the freedom to do that. We have family and friends who are going to come first today and share words of greeting. I'm going to ask the Honorable Barbara Bass, who's not only a, the mayor of Tyler, but also a, a member of the family. Ms. Barbara, would you come? And then following her will be Lanny Ramsey, a friend and attorney from Mount Vernon, we're delighted that both of you could be here, and we look forward to hearing from you. Ms. Barbara, you come.
Good afternoon, everyone. I was very honored when Janie called and asked me to speak for the family. When I joined the Bass family a little over 40 years ago, Janie and Ray welcomed me with open arms. We met each other and just embraced each other in love. Ray had a public life. When he was on the road, he gave his all. He put everything into his performance, everything into his fans. He knew that he had a God-given gift, a voice that people loved to hear, and he was all about being the best that he could. When he came off the road, he came off to the sanctity of his family. He went to the ranch, and it was all about respite. It was about him refilling so he could go back on the road again and do what he loved to do. Micah 6, 8 says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you to act justly and love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? Ray was a very humble person. He was as down to earth as you could get. And among family, we saw him just as a brother, a son, an uncle, a cousin, a best friend, and someone who cared deeply about each and every one of us. As he was growing up, he went from Dallas to Perryville between his mom and his dads. And when he got to Perryville, he was at home. He went fishing and hunting. He was quite a shotgun expert. He could hit those ducks that nobody else could hit. And during that time, he met his best friend, Billy Bass. Billy and Ray hunted and fished through life. And when he would come in off the road later as he was touring and traveling, he would call Billy and say, I'm going to be in. Can we go fishing? Can we go hunting? They wore out a few of those Billy Bass fishing lures and had some great times bringing in the big catches. That Billy Bass that was his best friend later in life became his brother-in-law, and that made it even more special. So he came in, and there was his sister and his best friend, his brother-in-law, and all of the rest of the family. When I talked to the family about the remembrances they had, it was the visits with his dad, Papa, to the farm, the thoroughbred horses, oh, they were beautiful, and whatever else was happening at the farm at that time. And it was a sense of him just accepting each one of us for wherever we are, were in our life, not expecting anything more than we expected out of ourselves, but being very proud for what each of us accomplished. Ray was a very special person. He had a God-given talent that he shared with all of us, family and friends. But beyond that, he was a very private person who loved his family, who loved his God, and who walked justly among all. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Ray was a direct response to God's plans for him. He listened to what God wanted in his life. He sang for the glory of God, and he enriched all of our lives for who he was and what he gave. On behalf of the family, let me tell you that every one of us have a very special hole in our heart today because Ray is gone. We are grieving, but greater than that, we know with joy that he is with Christ today. He has lived a wonderful life that all of us as Christians are working toward. He is healed today. There is no more pancreatic cancer. And with that healing, we know that we will get through this grief and God will be with us each step of the way because forevermore we will also have the memories. Uncle Ray, we love you. God bless you all. Please keep us in your prayers as we go through this time. Thank you.
My name is Lanny Ramsey, and I'm from Mount Vernon. I'm a retired district judge. I now practice law. The first time that I met Ray Price, a friend of Ray's called me right before Thanksgiving and asked me if I did wills. And I said, yes, I do. And um, they told me that Ray had pancreatic cancer and he needed a, a will drawn. And could I come to his house in Titus County? I said, yes, I would. I went to his home in Titus County. This was right before Thanksgiving. And I didn't know what I would see when I got there. I didn't know what to expect. When I went in, there he was. I grew up knowing who Ray Price was, knowing about Ray Price. And I introduced myself to him. He was obviously a sick man, but he wasn't pitiful. He wasn't dramatic. He wasn't afraid. He was a stately gentleman, a trooper. His voice was clear. His mind was clear. He, we visited about various things, and then he told me what he wanted in his will. And I told him that I would prepare that for him. I left. That was right before Thanksgiving. And then right after Thanksgiving, on December the 2nd, I took the will, went back to Ray's house. When I walked in and went over to him, he was reclining. And his first words, he stuck out his hand. He said, hi, Lanny. I told him about the will. I told him what was in the will. I answered any questions he had. And then there were two witnesses and a notary present. And the, wills were and the will was executed. Now, while the notary and the witnesses were finally signing up the will, I stepped over to the side and Janie was standing in the room and, and over to the side and I said, uh, I said, Janie, would it be okay if I ask Ray about his spiritual condition? That was very unusual for me. I've been a Christian for many, many years. I taught Sunday school for over 30 years. But that was unusual for me to say that. But I was prompted to do so. And what happened next was very unusual for me. You see, I'd been a district judge for 29 years. I'd seen thousands of witnesses testify. I'd seen thousands upon thousands of questions asked and answers given. Some of those questions, some of those answers changed people's history. But never had I asked, nor had I ever heard anyone ask, a more important question than the one that I was about to ask. I told Ray that I had taken care of his, the legal issues of him dying, of his dying. And what I meant by that is, I had drawn an instrument that would determine where his property would go at his death. I said, Ray, could I ask you about your spiritual condition? Not knowing anything about Ray and his spiritual condition. But I wanted to know where his soul would go when he dies. And I was prompted to do that. Now, I said to Ray, and he said, yes, you can. And uh, I said, now, Ray, I'm going to use a term that's not used as much anymore as it used to be. We don't hear that word as much anymore. And that word is saved. And that comes from a lesson that I'm going to have Sunday morning about Christmas. And it comes from Matthew 1, 21, where the angel is talking to Joseph. 
and he tells Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sins. And so I'm going to ask you, I said, Ray, are you saved? He didn't miss a beat. He said, yes. He said, yes. And I went on to say, uh, and I can't remember everything I did say, but I went on to say, uh, saved by the blood of Jesus, Jesus died for our sins, uh, whatever. But he had said yes. I asked Ray if we could pray. And Ray said yes. And I prayed. Now this wasn't awkward. It wasn't, uh, it, it, it wasn't hard. Ray was friendly. He was a gentleman. He was focused. He was interested. He was kind. I believe Ray knew at that time that he was going to die. And perhaps very soon. I believe he was trying to get matters straight at that time. I choose to believe that Ray knew exactly what I meant when I said the word saved. You know, I was prompted to ask that question, but God is interested in the heart. Not in words necessarily, although those are important. But God is interested in the heart. And the man I saw there that day, on the second day of December, who said, yes, I'm saved, his heart was right. By his answer and his peaceful spirit, um, he impressed me. Now, we talked about some other things. I, I, uh, I told him, I said, Ray, I said, your mu music has impacted millions of people. I wasn't telling him anything he didn't know. And I said, for example, over the, since I met you first, my wife and I have been to Big Cedar Lodge in Branson, Missouri. And we had dinner at a very nice restaurant, the Warman House. And there was a gentleman who had a voice very much like Ray's. And just as we got seated, he started singing for the good times. I said, that fits. That fits. I found Ray Price to be a gentleman. And let me give you an example of that, and then I'll close. When we were talking, he was on oxygen. And he had a tube in his nose. And he needed to blot his nose. Not blow his nose, but blot his nose. And he pulled those tubes aside and took that handkerchief. And on the way to his nose, he said, excuse me. And he blotted his nose. And I thought, what a gentleman. What a gentleman that just naturally would say that. He was a gentleman. He was, uh, he was a stately, famous person. Obviously a sick man, but he had answered the questions of life. So, in the words of his great song, one of them, I'm so glad that we had that time to spend together. And I pray that for both of us, they were good times. Thank you. Ms. Janney, from the very beginning of our preparation, I knew this was going to be a special, a unique service. I didn't know how much to have the mayor of Tyler quoting Micah and Jeremiah appropriately. Very impressive. And to have a retired judge and attorney talking about Jesus, the most important relationship in one's life. Not what you would have expected right off the bat today, but praise the Lord for these folks. I'm glad I live in Northeast Texas. In a moment, this group of fine musicians is going to play another of a very recognizable song. And I'll tell you guys, when you play it, I've heard Ray sing Danny Boy, 
And Janie, you'll forgive me, but being a longtime Baptist, when I hear that introduction begin, my mind goes to, he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I can't help myself every time when that fires up. And then after they play, we're going to begin to hear from some men who spent their life in music. Voices primarily that we hear, faces that we rarely see. But today you're going to be able to see the faces, put them with the voices, and hear their recollections about a life lived remarkably. Hi folks, my name is Dallas Wayne, and I'd like to thank Janie and the family for inviting me to share a few words about our friend Ray Price. It is indeed an honor, and our hearts go out to them in their time of loss. 
And I've joked before that the album Nightlife might have ruined mine. My parents brought it home when I was not quite eight years old and immediately became very worried. Not only did I play it over and over and over again, but it was the album cover that seemed to capture my pre-adolescent interest and their concern. If you don't remember it, it was Ray holding a guitar and singing through half-closed eyes, and a couple in the foreground huddled close like lovers do. Looking at it, you could almost smell the cigarette smoke and perfume. It was pretty heady stuff for an eight-year-old kid. But it was then, and is now, and always will be, that voice. Ray sang from the heart, and you knew every time he stepped up to the microphone, he was giving you his heart and soul. As a recording artist and an entertainer, he was the very best I've ever heard. But more importantly, as a man, husband, father, and friend, that excellence showed through as well. The qualities of Ray Price, the man off stage, one-on-one, -on -one, were the same as his millions of fans witnessed while he was working. Heart, soul, grace, dignity, elegance, and character. And I loved his dry sense of humor and his laugh. I guess you'd kind of call it a chuckle. It was warm and genuine, like the man, and his eyes would twinkle as he'd tell a joke or share a story. And I'm going to miss that. He would seemingly go out of his way to be a gentleman. At least it appeared that way until you realized that was just the man he was. It came from his core and it was real, honest and true. It was just Ray Price being Ray Price. And I'll miss him, all of us will. But no one's gonna miss him more than his loving family who our hearts are breaking for today. Thank you, noble Ray Price for being our friend, our teacher, our inspiration and hero, and for being the epitome of the word noble. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Eddie Stubbs, one of the staff announcers for the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee. And also, I host the evening shift on 6.50 a.m. WSM in the Music City. At night, WSM is heard in 38 states and parts of Canada and worldwide via our web stream at WSMOnline.com. I also serve as the announcer on the Marty Stewart Show on RFD-TV. I bring you the heartfelt sympathy to this community and to the family especially, from the Grand Ole Opry, its members, WSM Radio, and its listeners all over the world, and the cast and the viewers of the Marty Stewart Show who mourn this incredible loss. To you who are with us today from this community, this is where Ray Price called home for the last 31 years. To you, he may have been a relative, a friend, neighbor, an acquaintance, or someone you saw doing business here in Mount Pleasant, Texas. He was born in the tiny community of Peach, bordering Perryville, not too far from here, and proudly proclaimed throughout his life that he was, quote, just a country boy. But the country boy who spent nearly a third of his life here in Mount Pleasant was known around the world. Through his God-given talents, Ray Price endured an unbelievable 65-year career in country music. At his wife Janie's request, I'm here today to speak about Ray's importance to country music. You know, every performer in country music is an act. However, not every act is an artist. 
Ray Price was truly an artist. It's one thing to make a contribution. It's another thing to make a difference. Ray Price did both of those things in a major way. He was a pioneering visionary who created a style within country music. As a vocalist, Ray Price had a lot of contemporaries, but none were his superior. He viewed his voice as his instrument. To hear Ray Price sing, one would have had to imagine that he spent endless hours practicing. He did indeed. Ray Price worked very hard over the years at perfecting his craft. And if you take the time to analyze his huge body of recorded work, you can hear his sound progress through his diction, vocal range, tonal qualities, and his phrasing. The material that Ray Price chose to record was very important. Lyrically, it had to be honest, believable, something people could relate to, and at the same time, never be contrived. A good melody was also important to him to allow his band, the Cherokee Cowboys, to work their magic as only they could do. Many of the hit songs he recorded became legendary standards. Tunes like Crazy Arms, City Lights, Heartaches by the Number, Make the World Go Away, A Way to Survive, For the Good Times, I Won't Mention It Again, and You're the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me, among others, sound just as fresh today as they did when they were made decades ago. For a lot of died the Wool Country fans, the 4-4 country shuffle that Ray Price introduced on Crazy Arms in 1956 was the last great innovation in modern country music. If the music had never progressed beyond that point, it would have been just fine because to those fans, the Ray Price beat was as good as it gets. To think that his predecessors in the business, people like Ernest Tubb, the Leuven Brothers, and even the queen of country music, Miss Kitty Wells, would go on to utilize this rhythm was certainly a compliment to Ray Price not to mention all those who've come since. Buck Owens and Wynn Stewart out in California were quick to adapt the Ray Price shuffle to their special brand of Bakersfield music. But country music did progress, and Ray Price did as well. Ray liked to make music that was pretty and appealing to the ear. He enhanced his sound with multiple fiddles and later string sections with orchestral arrangements. He had an eye for talent and helped many young songwriters achieve opportunities by recording their songs. Bill Anderson, Harlan Howard, Willie Nelson, Hank Cochran, Chris Christofferson, among others, all cite Ray Price's helping hand to them at an early time in their career, and they have never forgotten what he did for them. As the music progressed, Ray bucked the system many times and stuck to his instincts. When rock and roll emerged in the mid-1950s, as many of his country music contemporaries sought to adapt their sound to what was then current, Ray stayed tried and true with a fiddle and pedal steel guitar and that shuffle beat rhythm. The hit records continued, and in 1956, he had the Billboard Record of the Year with Crazy Arms. Two years later, in 1958, City Lights was the Billboard Record of the Year. Ray Price kept the sound of the fiddle alive. The instrument had pretty much been on life support, it has been since 1957, becoming a luxury, not a necessity. It's important to note that if it hadn't been for Ray Price, the fiddle may have gone away completely from country music. He loved the sound of the fiddle, whether it was one or whether it was dozens of them, as evidenced here today with those beautiful strings that we've heard. They took his voice and motivated him to levels that were unachievable to him before when he got those fiddles behind him. Ray Price, without question, was a singer's singer, but he also was a picker's singer, too, in that musicians flocked to accompany him. If you were a fiddle or steel guitar player, it was a dream job to be one of Ray Price's Cherokee Cowboys because you got to play a lot. The records he made always featured a lot of both of those instruments, and if you were a musician, Ray Price's recordings became a constant companion to learn from. Some of his famed Cherokee Cowboys became stars in their own right. People like Roger Miller, Donnie Young, who later became known in life as Johnny Paycheck, Daryl McCall, and Johnny Bush, just to name some. His instincts also led him to do more orchestrated arrangements, which matched his unbelievable voice perfectly. Not many country singers were capable of making the transition back and forth between a band of 10 or 12 Cherokee Cowboys 
up to an orchestra that had as many as 110 pieces behind him. But Ray Price could and did deliver the goods every time he stepped on the stage. As a Grand Ole Opry member of many years, Ray Price was highly awarded for his work. Besides selling millions upon millions of records, he is ranked by Billboard as the number 10 artist of all time in country music because of his chart hit status. He won Grammy Awards as well as honors from the Academy of Country Music and the Country Music Association on Nashville, national television. In 1996, he received our industry's highest honor with induction into the prestigious Country Music Hall of Fame. It was Janie's request that I do something today that I don't normally do when I'm asked to speak at Celebrations of Life, and that is share some personal reflections. But uh, we, will, we will do this, Janie, for you. As a fiddle player, I was drawn to Ray Price's recordings, first by the beat of his shuffles he recorded. The fact that there was a lot of fiddle on those records really enhanced the experience. But the more I listened, I gravitated to the lyrical content and that unbelievable voice that Ray Price had. I truly believe that Ray Price could have sang the phone book or the tax code and people would have bought it. And he probably sold millions of copies of those too. There have been a lot of times in my life when Ray Price's records were the best friends that I had. His singing, the songs that he chose to record, along with the musicianship on those recordings, kept me company during some mighty dark and trying times. Ray's records also provided me with even more happiness when things were at their very best. When I got to see Ray Price and the Cherokee Cowboys in full concert for the first time, it was a life-changing experience. At that event, Ray granted me an interview before the show at Sunset Park in West Grove, Pennsylvania. He was really just dog-tired, not having had much sleep. But he complied with this young hillbilly disc jockey working out of Washington, D.C., that was playing his records on every broadcast that I did. After I moved to Nashville in 1995 and became an announcer on the Grand Ole Opry and hosting the evening shift on WSM is when we really connected. Nearly every time that Ray Price came to town, whenever possible, he would come and visit me at WSM. Sometimes those visits were short, just a few minutes, 15 minutes, but more often than not, they were two or three hours at a time. We logged many, many hours of interviews together. Whenever possible, Ray wanted me to come and introduce him on stage. I was such a huge fan for years that I would often drive four and five hours each way to hear him sing. On one occasion, he actually booked me, paid all my expenses to come down to Stafford, Texas and introduce him on a proposed DVD from the Stafford Center there. Ray and I talked about a lot of things over the years, among them, religion. When he found out that I was Catholic, we had a field day with that. <laughs> he shared how his stepfather was Catholic and the local priest would come over to his house fairly often. This was when Ray was a youngster now and, uh, because the priest knew who had the best cooking in town there in Dallas. As a kid, he couldn't believe this priest would come and eat with him so often. As he said, after the meal, and I'm quoting him now, I watched as the fun really started. Three of them broke out the car and they sat around, smoked cigarettes, and drank beer. It was always a great experience for that priest to come over. But before all, they had the fun, before all the fun and frolic after the meal, before they ate, the priest would always offer the blessing. And I interrupted the conversation and jumped in and said, the official Catholic blessing. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord, amen. And with a straight face, he looked up at me with that dry, sleepy tone voice and said, yeah, I believe that's what he said. <laughs> and I'm kind of surprised you knew how that went, being Jewish and all. We both bust out laughing at that point. Then it got serious. And Ray said, you know, Jesus was Jewish. I said, yep, he sure was. And he's our savior too. Ray responded, yep, and I know him too. And one of the things that he wanted to do for the, as he referred to these people as the, the old Jews that were in Moscow, he wanted to try and raise money 
to get them back to Israel. And he talked to a number of people about this. And they said, you must really have a thing for the Jewish people. What's this all about? He said, well, I think everybody should have those feelings. He said, those are my feelings because I plan on spending eternity with one of them. Yes. One of the greatest experiences of our friendship occurred this past January. I was honored with a celebrity salute at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, commemorating 30 years in country radio. And this was carried live on WSM. And when Ray Price was introduced and walked out, you could have knocked me over with a feather. He didn't perform. He only spoke. But what he said, I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. He stated that in his 65-year career, the finest interview that he had ever done over all those many years was a two-hour conversation that we had before an audience in the Hall of Fame when they had a major 1,100-square-foot exhibit honoring him that was up for the better part of a year. There were several other impacting remarks that he shared. And when he was done, Ray walked over to me. Tears were rolling out of my eyes. And I told him, I said, Ray, you'll never know what it means having you here tonight. You've got no idea. I can never say thank you enough. And I love you with all my heart. And he was shaking my hand at the same time, and he had both hands around my right hand. And I, he looked up at me and he said, I love you too, pal. And don't you ever forget it. Trust me, I never will. It was bad weather for a couple of days, with ice even that night, but his bus driver Joe was with us today, and booking agent, one of his band members all told me Ray was bound and determined to be there. He made a special trip all the way from Mount Pleasant on a bus ride just to be there for a very few minutes, and then he turned around and came back. I did the math on this, and that was an 1,100-mile journey round trip, and factoring in the cost of diesel fuel and paying a driver, this cost Ray a minimum of $1,700. How many people would do that for you, let alone an iconic figure like Ray Price? It will forever be one of my most cherished memories. Going back to our earliest interviews, Ray professed his belief in God. He gave God all the credit for the talent he'd been given. Over the last dozen years or so, with numerous hospitalizations, Ray's faith only deepened. In the last two years, with this horrible pancreatic cancer, those of us close to Ray watched as the outer man grew weaker, the inner man only grew stronger. While Ray loved his fans and devoted his life to them, making the time to sign every autograph until the last person left the venue, he didn't let a lot of outside people into his world. To have his endorsement and approval made you feel as if your whole life had been validated. Ray Price was and remains a major hero in my life, and he always will be. As a kid growing up in Gaithersburg, Maryland, I never could have dreamed that I'd ever get to see him, let alone know him, become his friend, and to be asked to be a part of this service today in his hometown. Speaking of hometown, I want to share a story with you that Marty Stewart shared with me just a couple of hours before Ray passed on Monday. Marty Stewart and the fabulous superlatives, his group, were headlining a show last Saturday night down in Tyler, Texas, at a place called the Oil Palace. It's a huge nightclub and dance hall. Travis Tritt, Chris Cagle, and Corb Lund all preceded Marty and the boys that evening on the stage, and there were several thousand people in this venue. And they were really living it, living it up and partying hard and dancing the night away. It was loud and the audience was very rowdy. When Marty got done, the audience was going wild. So he decided to do one more song. He asked all these folks to come down front, get in close to the center of the stage. And he told them, he said, there's a country music legend about an hour up the road from here. That's getting ready to leave this world. And I hope tonight before you go to bed that you'll say your prayers and remember our friend Ray Price. We'd like to sing him home 
with a song here, Angels Rock Me to Sleep. Marty said it was as if they were having church in this big honky-tonk and dance hall. Everyone was so quiet, you could have heard a pin dropped. The men all removed their hats and held them over their hearts. And as the music started, with just sparse guitar accompaniment, the quartet sang, and the men and women out there in the audience could be spotted with their hands up in the air, being moved by the Spirit of God. And many of those in attendance could be seen wiping tears as the fabulous superlatives sang that beautiful old song, asking the angels to rock Ray to sleep in the cradle of love, bear him over the deep to the heavens above. When the shadow shall fall and the Savior shall call, angels rock Ray to sleep in the cradle of love. Hardy said it was one of the most moving things he'd ever witnessed in his entire career, seeing these people and their actions. In less than 40 hours, the head Cherokee cowboy was gone. You know, there are some people that should never have to die. In my eyes, Ray Price was one of those people. People are watching this all around the world today, thanks to the webcast here of Mount Pleasant First Baptist Church. And it's raining today. Ray wrote a song and had a big hit in 1961 with a recording called Soft Rain. And the last line of that song is, and the soft rain was teardrops for the angels all cried. I believe the angels are crying today for this community of Mount Pleasant as we remember our friend Ray Price. In one of the many interviews that we did, I asked him when the time came how he'd like to be remembered. It was simply this quote right here, as a really good singer. I don't think anyone will ever question that. Ray Price's indelible imprint on country music is a topic that a book could be written about, and hopefully one day we'll see that happen. Until then, I'm going to put you on the honor system to introduce the music of Ray Price to others. We all had to learn about Ray Price from someone or some place, so please pass it on. Especially now, in the Christmas season of giving, while we're still trying to come to grips with this incalculable loss, I hope that you'll take the initiative and reach out and share what you know and love about Ray and his music with others. Give the gift of music. Provide an online link to some of the YouTube video footage that's out there of him over the decades. Or just play one, some of his music. If a person is learning to play and sing music, point them in the direction of the diversity of Ray Price's enormous catalog of recordings. Covering multiple styles, it's an absolute clinic to learn from as well as enjoy. I'd be willing to bet that those folks will end up thanking you. And in the end, you'll thank yourself for having done it. I'd like to quote a verse from Philippians right now, chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I'm confident that this passage of Scripture is how an untold number of people feel about Ray Price, the man. Ray Price, the friend. Ray Price, the family member. And if you only knew him through his music, Ray Price, the artist. He was truly an American original, one of a kind, often imitated, but never equaled. As one of the absolute elite master vocalists of all time, Ray Price and his music represented poise, professionalism, dignity, and class. For a lot of us, Country music will never, ever be this good again. To borrow a line from I've Seen It Go Away, a powerful song written and sung by Ray's friend Merle Haggard. When you've seen the very best, the rest can hardly play. Without question, Ray Price was among the very best there's ever been or ever will be. You know, it would be hard to imagine what country music would have been like had Ray Price not been a part of its fabric. Thankfully, his legacy is secure, and we'll never have to worry about that. God's gift of Ray Price and his music to us is an extraordinary blessing, a blessing we should always be grateful for. And in the days, months, and years to follow, 
May we never wane or allow others to forget this humble man from East Texas, the remarkable, remarkable voice that he kept until the end, and his wonderfully unique music on record that will continue to entertain, inspire, and educate, and a music that will outlive us all. God bless you. God bless you, Janie. God bless you, Cliff. And may God bless the soul of Ray Price. There were many times when Ray and I chatted on the phone, about every week and a half, and Janie and I were in conversation, uh, generally twice a week. And uh, I would always ask Ray what he wanted me to share with the listeners because people were so concerned, not just domestically, but in different parts of the world. As far away as South Africa, people were praying for Ray Price. And he said, find a record, Eddie, that I made a few years back called Let's Make a Nice Memory Today. And we hopefully will make nice memories today of this celebration of, of life here in his, in his hometown. And we're going to call on our musicians today to render that selection for you. Let's make a nice memory today. Thank you. You know, that, that's not really fair you do that. 
They say in show business is a hard act to follow. This is a great band, aren't they great? Wonderful. I uh, I thought about two things. Uh, by the way, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm Bill Mack. My name is Bill Mack, and I, to which a lot of you folks out there think, so what? Janie, thank you for allowing me to be here. And thank you folks for allowing me to come to Mount Pleasant. As Cindy, my wife Cindy, she's just like a brother to me. As we were driving over today, and this, it was a heavy rainstorm, heavy, heavy rain. And I thought of something that my, my precious pal said one time. He was to go into Bass Hall, that's one of our bigger assemblage places in Fort Worth. It was raining, raining. He said, well, I guess they wanted to come and see me coming out in this rain. And I thought, well, here am I pleasant coming over. It was raining, so I suppose that he's, well, he's appreciative, I know, to have you folks here. I asked him one time, I said, what made you move to Mount Pleasant? And he said, well, it's a pleasant town. How do you think it got its name? <laughs> Ray could make me laugh. He had a great sense of humor. What he loved about Mount Pleasant, he did tell me. Well, I can back it up a little bit. He would come to my house for a visit, and he always came over the bus. It's a two, two and a half hour drive from Fort Worth to his ranch home in Mount Pleasant. But uh, he'd always come over the bus. And I asked him one time, I said, why don't you let the bus driver come in the house? He'd just come over for a visit or to be on my radio show, which we broadcast from my home. I said, why don't you let the bus driver come in with you? And he said, he's been with me for two and a half hours. Let him sit out there. <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he was... Uh, a marvelous, marvelous pal. Just always made my day. Being around him. And I suppose it could be because I met Ray Price for the first time just as I was going into broadcasting. His career had been running for just a few short years. And uh, I was working in Wichita Falls, Texas. And they said, Ray Price is coming over. And I said, oh boy. Because I had not interviewed many people. It was noticeable when I interviewed Ray because he kept looking at me kind of strange. Had that pompadour, I was wearing a pompadour and he had that smile. I always wondered if he was smiling in my pompadour or what I was asking him that day. I don't think I did ask him any good questions, but he, um, I mentioned, I met him in 1953. That interview I did with him was in 1953. Added up friendship 60 years ago. And it wasn't one of those friendships where you would see each other maybe once a year, maybe once or twice, three or four times a year. We stayed close, close in touch because we played a lot of gigs together. I was his MC many times. And I had the honor of watching my good pal perform. Now when I say good pal, I. That's lacking. I really can't describe what he meant to me as a singer. Eddie put it so well, and my good friend Dallas Wayne, thank you guys. But Ray Price 
as an individual was beyond the norm. And I don't think he ever did realize he was a star. He knew that he knew that uh, he knew that people liked to hear him sing. That is something else. When he when he did an appearance anywhere, he didn't ask for any big smoke to be blowing on the stage or dancing girls. He liked to just walk out on the stage with his drifting cowboys. And he never did run out on the stage. He just took a slow walk out to the stage, picked up the microphone, and started singing. It was magnificent songs. And I never heard Ray Price, and Ray was always a positive person. I suppose there were times when he had some negative thoughts, but most of the time, all of his thoughts were positive. He didn't get into politics. Uh, I guess he discussed it every once in a while, but not. he never made a big deal about it, and I never heard him go into politics. This is always about, he was most of the time talking about his peers, what they had accomplished, or maybe he had a funny joke to tell me. He was just a good old boy. And that's another reason he, he loved to live in, in Mount Pleasant, because the people in Mount Pleasant made him realize that he was just one of them. I know you folks in Mount Pleasant realized his importance, but he, he just thought, I'm doing their job, they're doing theirs, and we're all living together over there in Mount Pleasant and enjoying life. Then I think about a part that is a little difficult. And again, uh, I say, Janie, thanks to you and Virgie for spending so much telephone time with me. I didn't know what to say today. So I didn't, you can obviously tell I didn't write too good a script. I'm just letting it come to my mind as it comes to me. But Ray Price loved, I know he loved God. He loved his Janie. He loved Cliff. He loved his fans. And his friends. Oh, did he have the friends. They gave me the otter. J.D. did uh, to represent Ray with the media. And folks, I've spoken at quite a few occasions down through the 60 years of broadcasting, but you'd be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, at the amount of posts that were put on my Facebook, you, you can count them, way over 2,000 some odd. And the emails I received from his many peers and friends, unbelievable. I'm telling you, it's been a job, and if he ever had to die again, I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> no, I would. I would because those thousands of people gave me encouragement. They were talking about Ray Price. Priceless. Priceless. I told him one time, I said, you should write a book. He said, why? I said, my goodness, that everybody has a book. Said, he said, I'm thinking about doing it, and I'm sure that Janie, somebody will come up with a biography on this man. Oh, it'll be well worth taking. It, it, it would take several volumes to really tell the story. 
a rate price, and then you still wouldn't find a proper ending to it. I said, well, what would you, what would you title your book if you wrote it? He said, I would title it, For the Good Times, My Association in Broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> he, there was a title, something like that. Uh, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time because I've got to be honest. This is a um, this is such an honor to be asked to be here, but it's a little bit tough. Uh, Ray was responsible as. You've heard he's been, he was responsible for getting so many other people a chance to get into the business that he loves so well. But Ray could have been a, he could have, he, he was a country singer, but he could sing anything, anything. And nobody could beat him. And as he got older, as he, well, I don't say that word, as he added some years, his voice got better. He has an album that's coming out. You know what he did? He called me one time and played the album. It took about 40, 45 minutes, and I hope he didn't put it on my bill. But anyway, <laughs> he, he let me sing or hear him sing the new album, and even the telephone never heard him sound better. It'll be coming out in the near future, I hope. It will be coming out. I just, uh, I got to tell you, I heard from Willie Nelson this morning. Willie called me. And as I mentioned, there's so many others have called, and I don't have time to, to even mention their names. But so many out of Nashville, out of California, New York, just saying, tell the family hi for us, and uh, tell them how much we love Ray Price. But Willie sent me a note. First, I, well, I got to tell you a story. Now, I was listening to Sirius XM satellite radio drive again a while ago, in the rain. <laughs> And we had Merle Haggard on, this is a broadcast done a couple of years ago. Merle Haggard was with Ray, and, and I was there with him, and we were talking about just everything that came to mind. And we got to the rooster story. Now this has to do with Willie Nelson. Then I'll read you what Willie told me to present to you people, especially to his precious family. But uh, Ray, Ray liked to, at one time he used to collect roosters, fighting roosters. And he had this, this beautiful rooster, he was so proud of. Now this was when Willie, this was before Willie became a star, and he had this uh, farm outside of Nashville. <laughs> and uh, Will, uh, Ray was going on tour, so he called. He called Willie, and he said, "Would you, um, would you keep my rooster for me?" He said, now, "This is. I want to tell you something. This, this rooster cost me a lot of money, and it's beautiful. Would you keep it while I go on the tour? Then I'll come back and and get it and take it to my place. But my, the people at my place are going to be gone, so I need to place to." to but the rooster. Willie said, now bring it on out, bring it on out. That'll be fine, I'll take care of it. So <laughs> Ray takes the rooster out to Willie's ranch and, uh, and then Ray went on the tour and Willie's wife at the time, Shirley, 
told him, he said, we're going to have to get rid of that rooster. That rooster is not only attacking the hens, it's killing our other roosters, and it's the meanest rooster I ever saw. We've got to get rid of it. And well, they said, now we're going to keep that rooster. We've got to keep that rooster because it's raised. <laughs> Willie came in one afternoon. He'd been out somewhere. I guess he'd been to Tootsie's. Place there in Nashville he'd love to go to. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll cut it short. Ray called Willie and said, I'm back in town. How's the rooster? Well, they said, delicious, we're having it for supper. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I have this note in closing from Willie Nelson. Nobody loved Ray outside of the immediate family, nobody loved him any more than Willie. So this is exactly what he told me to present to you. He, he talked to me on the telephone, and I said, well, text that to me so I won't, I can get it right. So he sent me a text. Dear Bill, tell Ray's family, Janie and Cliff, my prayers are with them today. Ray was not only a great friend, but without Ray Price, there very well would not have been a Willie Nelson. Uh, he paid me to write songs for his publishing company, Panther Music, and he also hired me to play bass in his band when Donnie Young, alias pa Johnny Paycheck, quit the band. Ray called me and asked if I could play bass, and I said, who can't play bass? And it didn't take him long to know I was not a bass player. We laughed about that many times afterwards. I would open the uh, shows or the gigs for Ray with the Cherokee of Cowboys, and I did about 45 minutes of little Jimmy Dickens jokes and Hank Williams songs while the crowd yelled, where's Ray? <laughs> Those were the good old days. He will be missed, Willie. And as I, I want to mention this, it, I mean it, it comes from the heart. Uh, Farron Young, who recorded one of Willie's first big hits, died in December several years ago. Marty Robbins, good friend of Ray's and mine and so many others, died in December. My very best pal, you may not have known him, probably didn't. He drove the stagecoach for the WBAP gang, Big John Brigham. Died in December. And two days ago, two days ago, was the anniversary, was the passing of my dad in December. So I just got to thinking about it. Look around at all of this. I have this feeling, it's a sincere feeling, that Jesus might have just called Ray home. I had his beautiful voice as they sang in heaven on his birthday. Merry Christmas, everybody. It has been an incredible pleasure to be able to sit and listen to this reflection on Ray's life, Miss Janie, through these men.
Gentlemen, thank you for coming here today, opening up your hearts and telling us about this man who was a simple man, very much a part of the community of Mount Pleasant, blended right in. But thank you for giving us that perspective. I close with this brief word. These folks have all touched on it. When you lose a friend, it's not a hard thing to be engulfed in darkness. When you go through a difficult time in your life, you become depressed, discouraged, and darkness seems to settle in with a palpable heaviness. When things don't go as we wish that they would go, our world turns more and more dim. God knew that. God didn't want us to be defined by our circumstances, be they defeats or victories. He didn't want us to be limited by the moment, but to open up to us possibilities that far outstretch our abilities and our, our hands reach. John described it in John chapter 1, verse 14, and he said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. In this Christmas season, we are reminded God has made a way for us to be liberated from the darkness of grief. God has made a way for us to be set free from the dimness of transient circumstances. God has made a way for us to know his life and his light and to be able to celebrate it every day of this earthly experience. But then when that moment comes, as it did with Ray on Monday afternoon, we step through that shadowy veil of death into life everlasting and live eternally in the glorious light of Christ. Thank God for that gracious gift. Charles Hubble, chaplain with Cypress Basin Hospice, is going to come and lead us in our benediction. After that benediction, we're going to be dismissed. Miss Janie is going to be here at the front of our auditorium for a little while, and if you'd like to come and speak with her, you are welcome to come and do that. Again, thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing in this tribute, for offering your encouragement to this family. God bless you for being here. Shiles, come and dismiss us, please, in prayer. Would you stand for this prayer? Let's pray together. Father, we ask today that you would bless this service. And Lord, we're thankful that you truly did. We thank you for your presence with us, for comforting each person that's here with your goodness and your love and Lord we pay special tribute to a very special person today we thank you for Ray Price we thank you for his life we thank you for his legacy we thank you for all the multitudes that he has influenced in his life and Lord we thank you that you put a call on his life to be a musician, to be an artist that would touch the world. And we're grateful for that. And Father, we're grateful for his faith that has been spoken so many different ways this afternoon. That he was a man that loved you and he was a man prepared for this day. So we're thankful that he is enjoying his reward in heaven with you in your presence. But Lord, each one of these and many, many around the world are, are left behind. And so I pray for your grace, and I pray for your strength, I pray for your comfort to be with each one of them, help them to walk this difficult journey. And I pray, pray especially for Janie today, that Lord, that you would just wrap your arms around her, help them to feel your love, help her to feel your love and presence, help her to know that you're there for her and you're gonna walk this journey with her and Lord, just bless her in a special way. So Father, we go today thanking you for Ray Price, and we ask, Father, that you bless every person here. I wanna commit them all to your loving care and pray that every need here will be met by you. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen.